Hi, this is Dr. A with Basics of Urinalysis. We're going to look at physical and chemical examination of urine. So let's start with a physical examination of urine. We're going to look at color and appearance. So a normal urine appearance or clarity is going to be clear or maybe slightly hazy. A normal urine could appear to be turbid, cloudy, or opaque. The uh, normal color of urine could be colorless, almost like water. Straw colored, yellow, or amber. This is a picture of what amber looks like. So it would be kind of a very golden, rich, orangey, almost brown color. But that could be uh, just a very concentrated urine could look amber. Abnormal urine could be pink, red, or brown in color. I've even seen some that are like blue green, um, depending on the types of medication a patient might be on. Um, uh, urine can also be a variety of shades of yellow due to pigments such as urochrome, uroethrin, and porphyrins. The color can be affected by food, drugs, or disease, um, and the most common cause of abnormal urine color is the presence of blood. So examples of urine colors and their causes are going to be uh, uh, pink urine, it could be beets, rhubarb, or blood. Brown color could be um, melanin, phenol derivatives, um, or fecal contamination. Green could be a pseudomonas infection, but also some medications will turn it kind of a blue, blue-green color. Um, a yellow-green here could be bilirubin. So um, bilirubin is got it. So it almost looks like there's a dye in there when bilirubin is present and it kind of sticks to the edge of the cup. So it's, it's really uh, very typical. Once you've seen um, the yellow green from bilirubin, you won't forget what it looks like. And then orange, uh, like it's really striking orange color, not just an amber color. It could be from vitamin A or from pyridium, which is a drug that is sold over the counter for urinary tract infection. And again, it has a kind of a dye color uh, to it is a very intense orange. Uh, the more pale and clear the urine, the more likely the specimen is to have a low specific gravity reading, meaning it's really dilute, or it could be, have been diluted with tap water. Uh, and concentrated urine tends to have an intense color, so again, it, all the way up to this amber color and a higher specific gravity. So again, specific gravity can be an indication of how concentrated a urine is. The odor. So urine has a distinctive aromatic odor, uh, and in most situations, it will have no clinical significance. Therefore, odor is usually not included as part of the chemical examination. Uh, the clinical examination uh, on the report is not noted, although, again, there are uh, specific times when uh, the odor could be striking because of an infection. Uh, it's not something that's usually documented. So routine chemical testing of urine. Commercially available dry, single, or multiple reagent test strips are used for the routine chemical testing of urine. These reagent strips are plastic strips that have one or more chemically impregnated test on an absorbing pad. And a chemical reaction occurs when the chemicals on the test strip come in contact with urine. And then that reaction causes a color change in the absorbent pad and um, the color is compared to a color chart, and uh, which is usually printed on the side of the reagent strip bottle, and the intensity of the color is usually proportional to the amount of the substance present in the urine. Here is an example of what this would look like. You can see the, the strip, the different color pads, and they're comparing it to a chart of color changes. And we're gonna look at those actually more specifically for a um, specific test. Uh, the results of this testing then are considered to be semi-quantitative. So we get, um, you know, number ranges or we get 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus. So it does give you somewhat of a quantity, but it's not an exact number. Abnormal results from reagent strips testing may be indicative of certain findings in the microscopic examination of the urine. So they would correlate to what you find in the microscopic examination or they may require confirmation with additional chemistry tests, um, and this could even be some of the serum or plasma chemistry tests. The reference ranges for this, the normal values or normal ranges can vary considerably depending on the type of specimen collection, the age of the specimen, the method of storage and preservation, and also the strips, the brand name, the machine, etc. The table on the next slide is going to 
um, represent the reference ranges for a fresh, clean catch midstream collection pot of specimen. So the color should be straw to dark yellow. The appearance should be clear to hazy. The specific gravity can be anywhere from 1.003 to 1.029. The pH can be 4.5 to 7.8. The protein, glucose, ketones, bilirubin, blood and leukocyte esterase and nitrites should all be negative. And then a urobilinogen should be between 0.1 and 1.0 EU per deciliter. This right here gives you a typical um, strip that can be read and um, you see the hand holding it. It's usually read from the bottom here going up uh, with these being read first and then the top ones being read last, and you can see the possible color changes here to the right of the strip. And you can uh, see the results here it could be um, specific pHs or specific um, gravities, or it can be um, 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus for the ketones, um, etc. There's also your reference ranges for a microscopic exam, which we will cover the microscopic e exam in the next video. So for white cells, it's going to be 0 to 4 per high power field. For red cells, for a male, is 0 to 3 per high power field. For a female, is 0 to 5 per high power field. Casts are going to be 0 to 4 per low power field. And bacteria should be not present, should be negative. So HPS, HPF is high power field. Uh, it's a magnification of 400x, so that's the 40x objective. And low power field LPF is uh, at 100x magnification, meaning using the 10x objective, uh, knowing that oculars also magnify things 10 times. So let's look at the reagent test strip interpretations. So for the glucose, in general, the presence of glucose indicates that the filtered load of glucose has exceeded the maximal tubular reabsorption capacity for glucose. So meaning that the glucose in the plasma is above the threshold of what can be reclaimed uh, and put from the urine back into the plasma, meaning some of it is going to spill over from that plasma into the urine. Uh, in diabetes mellitus, your testing for glucose is often substituted for the blood glucose monitoring. So the more glucose is ended up in the urine, the least controlled their diabetes is. For bilirubin, um, bilirubin in the urine indicates the presence of liver disease or biliary obstruction. Very low amounts of bilirubin can be detected in the urine, even when serum levels are below the uh, clinical detection of jaundice, so this was what makes this one useful. So here are the squares for bilirubin. Ketones, so the urine reagent strip test for ketones detects acetoacetic acid, but not the other ketones like acetone or beta-hydroxybutyric acid. In ketoacidosis, uh, due to insulin deficiency or starvation, um, it can be present in large amounts in the urine before any elevation is seen in the plasma levels. Again, uh, presence of ketones signifies that the person is burning fat for fuel, and this, this could be something they're doing on purpose if they're following a ketogenic diet, or it could be an indication of a pathology such as a diabetic ketoacidosis. Specific gravity. The specific gravity is a convenient index of urine concentration. So it measures the density, but it's only an approximate guide to true concentration. So a specific gravity of less than 1.010 is considered um, to be a, um, is considered with a concentrating defect. That means the urine is really too dilute. A specific gravity, specific gravity of more than 1.025 in the absence of protein, glucose, and other large molecular weight substances, such as contrast media, usually indicates a normal renal concentration um, and makes chronic renal insufficiency unlikely. So again, this is a measure of how good your kidneys can concentrate urine, but also could be a measure of hydration, if you will. Um, if somebody that's very hydrated and their kidney does not need to be concentrating the urine, it tends to have plenty of fluids on board, then they may have a lower specific gravity then. 
for blood the presence of large numbers of red cells in the urine sediment establishes the diagnosis of hematuria or blood in urine if the dipstick is more strongly positive than would be expected from the number of red cells then there's possibility of hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria uh, meaning hemoglobin or myoglobin themselves uh, being spilled into the urine versus intact red cells so um, either one any of those need to be reported could be indicative of pathologies the ph even though the kidney plays an important role in controlling the ph of the blood and the extracellular fluids measuring the ph of urine is not necessary to uh, monitor this role the urine ph is seldom of diagnostic value Phosphates can precipitate in alkaline urine, and urates can precipitate in acidic urine. So the pH can help you identify some of the crystals and things that could be seen in the microscopic. Um, and it's a good thing to report. Just uh, don't get too hung up on the pH. Protein. Heavy proteinuria usually represents an um, abnormality in the glomerular filtration barrier. This test is more sensitive for albumin than the globulins or the hemoglobin meaning it's picking up mostly albumin. Um, albumin should not be showing up in urine unless it's being lost from uh, the kidneys, and that, again, indicates a problem in that uh, glomerulus where it could be damaged, and therefore the albumin, which norm normally does not cross over, that albumin can cross over and spill into the urine. Urobilinogen. Urine urobilinogen is increased in any condition that causes an, inc an increase in the production or retention of bilirubin. So again, that would be tied back to liver health. Denitrite bacteriuria is caused by some gram-negative bacteria that um, will produce the nitrate reductase enzyme and give a positive test. So um, just FYI, the nitride test could be negative and there could still be some bacteria that are present on the microscopic. They're just not likely to be gram-negative bacteria. If there are gram-negative bacteria, usually the nitride test is going to be positive. The leukocytes, um, a positive leukocyte esterase test provides an indirect evidence of the presence of bacteria because of the presence of white cells. So the white cells are doing their job fighting off the bacteria, which is why they produce leukocyte esterase, and that's what is being detected on this test. All right, that's the end for the chemical analysis of urine. Thank you.